Once again, it's time for It's Your Business. I'm so excited to introduce you to our next guest. Such an interesting uh, guy. He's actually a best-selling author, a national speaker. You know, we talk about that. And uh, he's been tagged as America's premier mortgage expert. That's a good thing to be tagged with. Win a bunch of awards, speak a lot, people get to know you. And this is our guest. His name is uh, Shashank Shekhar. And he, again, is somebody who's going to jump in and tell us a lot of the questions that, that we've had about mortgages, especially when it comes to millennials. Because I know I got a lot of millennials. I have listeners across the board but i know i've had have a lot of millennial listeners judging by the emails and talking about you know that they've put off buying a house and they're either living with their parents or living with a bunch of people and just saving on the whole rent situation hey thanks so much for joining us appreciate it because i hear you're in sunny california am i right i am i am and are you um, – so in California, you, did you bring some water from Texas with you by chance? <laughs> because I, they need it. You know that, right? I wish. I wish, yeah. I would uh, rather have a little less of sun and more of rain here if I could. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it is. It's crazy. Uh, we talk about it all the time. And people from California call us. That's why I'm, I, I made that comment. It's interesting, too, uh, because, Shashank, when, you know, one of the things you hear about when you're selling a house, just kind of as an offshoot to this, is that whole curb appeal thing. And I heard people in California, a lot of them are doing that thing where you paint the lawn green because it doesn't look good when you have just cracked, you know, uh, dusty dirt instead of the luscious lawn that a lot of people want. Do you think there's anything wrong with painting it green? Would you advise someone to do that if you had to? No, oh, there, there is a new. That's a new trend here. As there are professional companies who paint it as if uh, it wasn't it was a green lawn. It looks very real if you will see it. So, uh, I haven't done gotten done to my house, but uh, what I've seen <laughs> on uh, on videos and TV, it's very surprising, but it looks very, very real. Yeah, I think it looks really real, too, and there's just a, just people wanting to see green. I mean, I grew up in, yeah. an, in an area where we got rain, and we saw green. And, you know, you, it wasn't that you never had a lawn that was a little bit, had a little bit of dirt spots on it, but you, for the most part, had green. You were trying to keep up with mowing the lawn, but it's a different, different uh, world now with drought problems in different areas. So... Besides the whole curb appeal thing, I mentioned this at the top, millennials and buying homes. Some of them are, are deciding not to buy, and then others are buying homes with the help of their parents. What are you seeing more of? Is it, are parents trying to help their kids so that they can have their empty nest and get, their, get the kids on the way if they have the financial means to do it? Are, are you seeing some of that? Uh, yes, and, and you're right. As a millennial, you started the the, uh, the topic by saying that most of them are not buying or, or preferring to rent, and that's true. Even the data suggests that in 2014, home ownership for millennials declined to the lowest level since it, so they started tracking it, and that was way back in 1980. So, in the last about 30, 35 years, uh, that age group. Has, uh, hasn't owned uh, the home uh, for uh, as little percentage as they do now, which is just over 36%. So that indeed is an alarming trend for anyone looking at real estate recovery in the future because uh, they are expected to be the future home buyers and keep the real estate recovery going. And to, to help with that, um, you're right, some of the parents are coming up and uh, helping their kids. Uh, some of them are doing it by paying towards down payment. Some of them are asking them or um, allowing them to just uh, stay with them and help save on rent money so that in two, three, four years, they will have the money for the down payment and that they can go in and buy themselves. Uh, in fact, a recent survey says that about 17% of the parents of millennial children uh, are expecting to help their children buy a home within the next five years. Wow. Um, so that's great. So a little help from the parents, and then you can get in there. I should say you're the CEO of Arcus Lending, which, um, you know, is a, you're a, a mortgage-based lender in mm -hmm. San Jose, California, but you also can do loans in California, Washington, and Oregon. As someone who's not in the business and people listening, how do you do that? So do you have to get licensed in all those states? Yes, I have to, and I'm also licensed in New Jersey and Texas, and we are uh, we are in the process of getting licensed in more states as of now. But yes, you need to have 
uh, license for uh, every single state you want to do business in. Unlike banks or bank loan officer, they can just, uh, they don't even need to get licensed. In fact, they don't even need to take a test and, and clear a test. They just, by the fact that you're licensed uh, uh, by a bank and you're an employee, you can just originate loans in all 50 states. But we as a as mortgage brokers do have to get licensed in every single state we want to do business in. Wow. So um, I would imagine then the, certainly mortgages, there's probably a little nuances in all the different states you, you mentioned because that's varied. You've got uh, Texas and New Jersey, couldn't be more different, California and Oregon and, and uh, Washington, et cetera. So there, are there little nuances in, in, in mor- doing mortgages in all those places? Yeah, a lot of. In fact, uh, when I uh, opened an office in Dallas last year, uh, just uh, just a small example here, our, our property tax rate in California is about 1.2% of the sales price. And, uh, and and we were doing our, probably our first loan in that area, and somebody told us that the property tax rate in, in the Dallas uh, metro area is anything between 22 to 2.8%. And I was oh. like, wow, that's huge. Uh, yes. and, and so is homeowner's insurance. So on one side, you see that the, the home prices in California are, of course, much higher. But on the other side, the property tax and home insurance are not that expensive compared to, say, say Texas. So you look at two different states, and um, and if you just looked at real estate prices, you would not be able to calculate the real cost of buying a home, which is all these other expenses that you have to pay. So as yeah. you go into new estates, you do have to learn these uh, small little nuances of, how the title works and how property taxes work and how the closing works and everything is a kind of a learning curve when you get into a new state. Yeah, I imagine it's very interesting though. You read a book called uh, First Time Home Buying 101, a complete step-by-step guide to home buying process, to the home buying process. So if somebody's a first timer and they're listening to us, what kind of quick advice would you give them? What would you say are the first couple of things they need to think about? So, Katie, yeah, that's where our specialty is, as and I, and personally, that's the kind of uh, profile that I like to work with with best because I think more than anyone else, first-time home buyers need to get the education and understanding of the process uh, more than anybody else. And uh, one of the things that I tell uh, first-time home buyers, and a lot of them are, by the way, millennials, is that uh, get pre-approved first because a lot of us want to look at home first just because that's the shiny more glamorous mm-hmm. part of buying a home, right? Because you want to mm-hmm. get all the nice homes and all the nice appliances and all that stuff. But I tell them that, look, first get your finances in order. Make sure you qualify. Make sure if there are red flags, you fix it. Uh, there are down payment issues, then we will uh, we will help you with that because there are loan programs now for as little as 3% down payment. You can buy homes in most areas in the U.S. And a lot of first-time home buyers do not know that. They think they have, they have to save like 15 20%, and then only they can buy a home. So we guide with them with all that. But really, if you are thinking of buying your first home and you're listening to the show, I think the first thing you should be looking at is is reach out to a loan consultant that uh, that you trust and have faith in and make sure that you get yourself pre-approved. Make sure you qualify for the loan and make sure you understand all the loan options that are available for you. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice because um, I did it both ways. The first time when I was looking, I didn't do it, and it was a real hassle. And then I realized somebody gave me that tip. Why are you not proving you should be fine? And doing that, it was smooth sailing, absolutely. And and nobody had told me that, and finally we figured that out. So I agree with you 100%. And you, do you find that sometimes when you're a first-timer, I think that people, like you say, they don't, there's so much they don't know about it. They're a little bit intimidated. And they also don't realize that at the closing, sometimes they're not really reading the paperwork. <laughs> it's good to read the fine print, isn't it? Absolutely. In fact, uh, uh, as in, I would say that the one of the biggest reasons for the 2007-2008 mortgage real estate crisis that we saw was because a lot of these homeowners did not quite understand what they were signing into. As in, they thought that the 1% teaser rate that they were getting was actually the interest rate in the loan. And, and so it's uh, very, very important, not just for the uh, potential homeowners, but the, 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 the loan officers in the business to educate them. And I founded Arcus in 2008 when everything was crashing down uh, on the sole principle that we will educate clients more than anybody else in the industry. And 
And you're right. And one of the things that we tell them is that, look, read everything that, that you need to. And if you don't understand it, ask questions. Don't just sign stuff because it was given to you. So, so you're right. You're totally right that sometimes there are things in, in fine print, which is more, more important. Uh, in fact, a news item came out just yesterday that uh, one of the government regulatory bodies, they are now um, talking about reverse mortgage advertising, where there are lots of things that the potential homeowners who want to get into reverse mortgages, these are retired old homeowners, and they are not mm -hmm. being informed of uh, a lot of disadvantages or the problems that reverse mortgages can have. And even if they are, these are put in the fine print. So, so you're right. As if you're buying something which is going to be this expensive, make sure you are reading those fine prints. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, Shawshank, thanks so much for joining us on America Tonight. You can pick up, you have a couple of different books. You can go to Amazon.com and you'll be able to see those and pick them up. And as, as we were talking about, if you're a first-timer, there's no doubt you should be armed with as much information as possible. You were terrific. Come back on again. Thanks. Bye-bye.